Case six is an 80 year old man with a painful ear nodule located on the anti-helix. Clinical impression was rule out squamous cell carcinoma. Now, if you have this right here, you can see why they thought it was a squamous cell carcinoma. It's got a thick layer of, of keratin on top with parakeratosis. So anything that's a thicker lesion that has a lot of scaliness on top is in a sun damaged old person. And look at all the elastosis there. This is very sun damaged site. Um, a, a thicker lesion that has a, a scaly surface is, you know, always going to have clinically the idea of, of uh, actinic keratosis, a hypertrophic actinic keratosis, or squamous cell carcinoma are going to be high on the differential, okay? And here you can see there's a little jumbled atypia along the basal layer, and certainly you could think about a hypertrophic actinic keratosis here. And in fact, this could actually be hypertrophic AK superimposed on something else. It's, it's hard to say, and you could argue both ways. I suspect this is probably all reactive because look over here at this side, we're beginning to get an ulceration and there's an ulcer here and there's fibrin at the base of the ulcer and fibrin underneath the epidermis. See that bright red fibrin? I find that a really helpful clue. This, uh, I see a lot of ulcers, but to get an ulcer with this real bright red fibrin, especially extending under the adjacent epidermis, is a feature that is really particularly common in this entity here. So we get this ulcer. Next to the ulcer, the epidermis becomes hypertrophic and acanthotic and thickened. And also we have this proliferation of very tiny, small blood vessels here. Look at them, numerous little tiny vessels on both sides of the ulcer. And in fact, if we go look at the other piece, you can see those vessels even better here. So here we don't have the ulcer, but we have a clue that we're about to get into an ulcer because we've got that fibrin, that bright red fibrin, and we have numerous tiny vessels. So that alone, when I see these tiny vessels and bonus point if I get the fibrin and the epidermis is acanthotic or thickened and I'm on the helix or anti-helix, this is chondrodermatitis nodularis helicis. Uh, we abbreviate that CNH because obviously it's a long name. And that's CNH until proven otherwise. Here, if you wanted to say it's actinic keratosis and CNH, cool, that's fine. But I personally probably would just blow off this stuff as being reactive and focus on the fact that we've got these little vessels here. And look, the, the uh, name suggests chondro, that there should be cartilage involved. And there is, but cartilage is oftentimes not present if you get a shave biopsy. Here, we're lucky. There's a tiny, tiny little nip of cartilage here that's kind of being sloughed off of the anti-helix from the underlying cartilage. But a lot of times, if you just get a shave, you won't see that unless it's a deeper shave. And I and that's totally fine if it's helix or anti-helix. And occasionally you can see it at other sites in the ear. And I've got these little tiny vessels and the other features I talked about. That is classic for chondrodermatitis nodularis helicis. The, uh, the reason this is important is because it often gets confused clinically with squamous cell carcinoma, but this is a benign diagnosis, but it is painful and uncomfortable. The idea of what happens here, the, 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 what's theorized to happen is that patients, um, when they sleep, especially if they have larger ears, and as you know, some people, particularly older men, tend to get continued enlargement of their ear with old age. So those larger ears, if they lay on their pillow on their side for a long time, the cartilage of the ear pushes that skin, it compresses the dermis and epidermis and the cartilage down against the pillow, and that eventually produces ischemia of that area. And the evidence of that ischemia is the proliferation of these tiny vessels. The tiny vessels are proliferating to try to bring more blood flow and oxygen into this area of chronic repeated episodes of ischemia. And you can see other ischemic things like on the lower leg tend to get little vessels like this too. So this is kind of a, we call this angiogenesis or angioplasia, and it's a phenomenon that often goes hand in hand with chronic ischemic change. So what's happening is that the dermis eventually breaks down and dies and undergoes fibrinoid necrosis, the cartilage begins to die too, and the epidermis opens up and tries to push that dead cartilage and dermis out. So that's called transepidermal elimination phenomena. We can see that in other settings in derm path, uh, most of which are not really relevant to the head and neck that I can think of off the top of my head. But but anytime you have an unusual abnormality of, of, uh, of uh, fibers, collagen or elastic fibers in the dermis or foreign bodies, 
oftentimes the epidermis will open up and try to reach down and sometimes it will actually send fingers of elongated reedy down underneath to try to grab and scoop out that dead and dying disorganized dermis or in this case cartilage so that is called it's either called perforation phenomenon or transepidermal elimination phenomenon if you want to be fancy and that's what's happening here is the body's trying to expel the dermis and the uh, cartilage that's been damaged by the ischemia but um, again if you don't see that that's fine just look for those little vessels and if you're not totally sure sometimes if i see those vessels and it's not totally classic i'll say that it's suggestive of cnh and the reason this is important is a it gives you an answer for what's causing the lesion and these are often painful um, and the other thing is, is that there's an, a unique treatment for this at least from what i've been told by my dermatology colleagues is sometimes they'll recommend the patient to to sleep on a donut shaped pillow that has a hole in the middle that will basically let their head rest against the bed but leave the ear um, kind of hanging there not being compressed to help avoid that ischemic change and that sometimes i'm not sure how how uh, how many patients recover from this or how long it takes i actually need to ask some of my derm colleagues but what i've been told is that that's the the general uh, treatment that's used for these uh, so anyway cnh chondrodermatitis nodularis helicis uh, a very nice example um, and showing you what it looks like with cartilage down here and without cartilage up here and i if you really want to see a good one i have a um a um uh, there's if you google chondrodermatitis nodularis helicis and my name you'll find one that i've posted before or tweeted before that it has a, a, a wedge was taken out of the ear and you can really see all the way down to the cartilage like a very dramatic huge um, excision of one of these i'm not exactly sure the story behind why but but it's a really dramatic example if you want to see one that has a bunch of cartilage under it